Good morning, I am KM. Welcome to the Snarky Physicist. It is not quite 7.45 in the morning, but uh, welcome to day in the life. So maybe you had some idea that uh, I only teach for about five hours a day most days, so if you're wondering what fills the rest of that time, take a look. This is the stack of stuff that I really should grade today. This is the electronics hospital. These have burnt fuses because students use them incorrectly. Have to replace all those. This is the morgue, dead batteries. The kind of weird thing is that we have the morgue right next to the hospital. Yesterday we had lab practicals, so this is the equipment that I have to make sure is working. We've also got a generator around here somewhere that um, the we have to take the belt off the generator, otherwise apparently it will melt and then we'll have to buy a new one and replace it, which is expensive and time consuming. At some point today, these chairs need to get taken back to wherever they came from. These little guys need new batteries. They're uh, sounding a little sad right now. We've also been having visitors in for our school accreditation, so that's been going on. Maybe I can uh, do something about the state of this desk today? Those posters were supposed to be replaced with uh, these posters. Maybe we can get that done today. Probably gonna have to wait given the amount of other stuff that I have to do. Oh, and also I may or may not have assigned a project and then never given the kids a handout explaining how to do the project, so I need to write that today. This is gonna be interesting. It's 10.23, it's break on a test day. Everybody's panicking. I need to design a project and do a ton of grading. Let's see how far I get. lunch now. People really cram in here during lunch, uh, especially because the test is going on today. So let me just let you know what's been happening. Um, I had two class periods of regular physics. They were just learning stuff about uh, circuits and stuff like that. And then I had one of honors physics. I did fix the multimeters. This is amazing. But um, it took me the whole class period, so I'm behind in things. That's okay. We'll catch up. Um, so there's a lot of kids in here studying. It is always packed out in here. I wish I could show you the kids, but I can't legally. Um, they have to have signed something for me to show them to you. So um, anytime you've seen kids on the show, it's uh, their parents have signed something to let them be on the show. This is our science office. Well, I spend my preps in here because I share a classroom. That's fine. The benefits for me of sharing a classroom really, really far outweigh the uh, downside of not having my own classroom. Ah, here's what I came for. Here's our supply cabinet. And, oh my goodness, they actually have paper clips in here. That's what I need. I need scantrons. So it's fifth period. It's my prep period. Uh, so first period was regular physics, second period was regular physics, third period is honors physics, fourth is lunch, and this is my prep. And, um, there's a lot of work to get done, but I have to eat first because during my lunch, I don't really get to eat. I have to let the kids finish their test. Um, I have to sort all the tests. And then there's people in asking all sorts of questions. They want to see their old tests. Um, they want to see old assignments. They want to ask questions about review, about the homework, about what's going to be on the test, what I'm going to give them. Um, so I get a few minutes here and there. Um, and some days are great. Some days I actually am able to sit and eat and just kind of relax. If you got to choose between helping the kids or getting that quiet extra few minutes, I'm going to pick helping the kids every time. It's kind of a no-brainer. It's just my job. No, that's not paid time, but that is time the kids need me. And they can't come talk to me during my prep. So I take a few minutes of my prep to breathe and eat since that doesn't happen during lunch. And uh, then I'll be getting on working. Let's address a common misconception. Um, first year teachers usually use their prep period to actually prep lessons. 
uh, after that, you don't have to. Um, gone are the days when I would spend hours prepping lessons that I don't have to do that. Um, in fact, pretty much I can see the topic for the day and have an idea in my head immediately what I want to do. So not really spending a whole lot of time on that. Um, some of the things that sometimes get done is grading. Um, it might be correspondence, answering emails, filling out paperwork. There's a lot of that. There's a surprising amount of that. Um, but another thing that I'm doing is uh, looking at professional development. Uh, there's a summer program I'm trying to do, but the amount of work to get into it turns out to be non-trivial because they want us to fill out all these kind of application things. And so it'll be a little bit of time. And that's okay. Another thing I'm probably going to do, they gave my coworker and I um, the same prep period so we can work with each other and collaborate during prep. So I might go visit him pretty soon. This is the other physics classroom. And instead of four, like eight normal size lab tables, there's these four like enormous lab tables. And there's like this upstairs area that I think we can't even get to anymore and all these little storage areas. Well, it's a quirky space. That's where I keep the dead bodies. I don't know if I should put that online. Um, uh, I keep very less uh, alive bodies up there. Yes. I don't know if that's better. Oh, uh, there might be some mice. Is that better? Some mice? Yeah, I found mice poop at one point, so... Oh, gosh. I might have to teach in this classroom next year. Wait, where am I going to teach? No, just one class period. I think I'm going to try to finish the electricity unit by um, the end of next week. Do some stuff with building things because I told them there would be hands-on stuff and that's that's mm -hmm. useful. Um, and then when we come back I'll do a week of like just the sort of the, special topics, the fun stuff. And then magnetism after that. Yep. Yay, yep. magnetism! Yay! <laughs> Learning goal. Understand how awesome supernovas are. <laughs> One of the few places where you can get a lethal dose of neutrinos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hypothetically, assuming you can somehow survive the rest of the stuff, even from a supernova, the neutrinos are lethal. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, Nick Tapia. He is one of my coworkers. He teaches uh, regular physics and physics and robotics, and he's hilarious. Uh, we have a lot of fun. Let's see, I'm gonna check out something that my other coworker sent me. This is pretty cool, what is this? So this is a interactive tutorial for magnetism. He's giving a test right now, so he is making good use of his time looking up cool demos. It's this little applet that uh, lets you look at how forces act on a loop of wire in a motor. This is really cool. Yeah, that's a lot better than we can draw it on the board. One person I do know who likes his job better than I like my job is this coworker, Sean Fottrell. Some of you know him as Mr. Fottrell. He was actually my teacher in high school, so that's pretty cool. All right, classes are done, tests are done. I'm starting to get to the point of extreme exhaustion here, but uh, I'm going to run Scantron so that they're ready for tomorrow. Have you ever seen a Scantron machine run? <laughs> stuff that got graded and this is the stuff that didn't get graded so and tonight I have kids choir so that's happening and I'm also incredibly behind in my writing <sighs> all right so this is where I go before choir practice I usually go to uh, this is my parents house um, and my mom and I both direct choir so I usually come over here and visit before choir, uh, and we do some planning, so that is where I am now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna plan for like 50 kids and hope for the best, but mm -hmm. um, then I'll get muffins and, I don't know, I usually get tangerines like cuties or something, but they don't usually eat them. They end up becoming projectiles and... Uh, Have you seen them become projectiles? Oh yeah, yeah, they, oh. they play with them like soccer balls, they kick them around the room. <laughs> I should say, not everybody, but... A, I've never a seen chosen, that happen! A chosen few of our boys decide that they're more fun to play with than to eat. Okay! 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And apparently I forgot my keys to the church, so um, that'll be interesting. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Cafe four. I actually don't drink coffee. This is hot chocolate. This is the room where I get the goldfish for the little kids because they need goldfish. It's like their fuel. They run on goldfish. Been running errands back and forth. It's actually a pretty good day if I never have to run, like physically run, like bolt as fast as I can. That's like a really common thing. I run around here a lot. By the way, this is Three Crosses Church. This is where we do our kids choir stuff. It's all very nice. I'm gonna go get some stuff out of the car because it got left there. So, um, this is basically my second job because that's actually really common for teachers. We have more than one job. And part of that's, well, for a lot of us, that's because of the money thing, but um, for a lot of us, that's just because we're the kind of people who overcommit and we care about a lot of things. So, um, so we end up with a lot of jobs. We end up wearing a lot of hats and that's okay. I do have fun though. It's kind of crazy. Something I want to impress though is that just this is what teaching life looks like when everything's ideal. When the kids are pretty easy to work with because um, they want to be there. When the administration supports you. When you have really, really great coworkers who um, <laughs> will help you out with everything. And when you've already got the curriculum kind of put together and you come home to a lot of support. Um, I actually haven't gone home today yet. I'll go home later to my husband, but um, that's what it looks like when you have that much support, when you don't have those things, any of those things. It's just, it makes it really hard. So um, I'm very lucky, I'm very blessed. Photobomb. <laughs> this is uh, where the older kids rehearse, but I'm actually the director of the younger kids. So nobody's here yet. We're like a half an hour early, which is the correct amount of early to be, you know. And this is our rehearsal room. Hello! They're so adorable. These are first through third graders. Today. Hi, say hi. Hello. That's Katie. She's hi. awesome. All right, and these are our lovely volunteers. Caitlin and Abigail and that's Will. That's actually my brother. What are you doing? Oh, I'm taking video. <laughs> Okay, it's, what time is it? It's 8.15. The kids have finally gone home. <laughs> You've been watching my hair and makeup get worse throughout the day, and um, it's been crazy. But this is pretty much every Thursday. This is like a really typical Thursday. I'm gonna head back to the other room carrying my very large box of t-shirts. And if you're wondering, yes, I had to run back and forth about five times because um, we didn't have the songs on our computer that we needed <laughs> to rehearse. Um, it happens. So uh, I'm gonna make my way back over there and then I get to go home. About to get to the actual best part of the day. This is the best part of my day. He made me cookies. He's the best. And that That's about... That's so weird. I said I was going to take my last video. Sorry. <laughs> and that about comes to the end of it. Um, I don't really have the option of staying up really late at night because... because of everything you've just seen. Um, so I need to go to sleep and do the whole thing again tomorrow, basically. Alright, good night. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to hear more.